somebody might receive what you preach today in another five years and to bring life to that person. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Very, very important. It's a message that we preach. One article I wrote years ago, an Italian man wrote me over the week asking me questions. Something I've forgotten. How to go back to read the thing, you know. So I'm trying to tell you that these things, they don't, they're not in vain. Praise God. Hallelujah. Anything you do in the name of the Lord is not in vain. The woman who did a service to Jesus, okay, she broke an expensive piece. People will hold your children, don't let. The one who did the expensive, you know, what, what do they call it? Um, oil. Alabasa oil. The expensive Ralph Rollen or whatever. Gucci perfume or whatever. <laughs> you know, people wonder that why could you do such a thing? And you know what Jesus told her? Told the people around that anywhere the gospel is preached, her name will be mentioned. mentioned. Praise God. Is it mentioned today? That's true, sir. <laughs> so there's nothing you can do in vain. Even if you do it in secret, it will come out to light. Yes. Praise God. The Lord knows how to honor his people. Amen. Don't, don't calculate. Don't try to be wise. Just go your way. The Lord will do it in his time. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I must confess to you, all of us go through a lot of battling along the way. But with this battery, we have to learn. That's true. Very important that we learn along the way. Today I'm going to share on why an anointed man like Elisha will taste of death. Why an anointed man like Elisha will taste of death. Now, this kind of teaching is not just to gather knowledge. This teaching aids us along the way. The things that Jesus brought to us, the messenger, are things that pertain to life. Life. And that life is in the Father. Praise God. Hallelujah. You can live in 100 years and have everything working out for you well in this world, and maybe you still have not tasted of life. You've not tasted of the joy You've not tasted of the abundance of the knowingness of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's what they call eternal life. Some of you standing here will not taste of death. Praise God. Hallelujah. I tell you the truth. Those some, of, some who are alive will never die. This is the gospel Jesus brought. He didn't bring a gospel of big, big choirs with everybody wearing gowns and big, big churches with big, big stuff. That's not the gospel he brought. He came to give you life, to quicken you. Praise God. Hallelujah. It can be big, it can be beautiful on the outward, it can be so attractive to man, but if it is not giving you life, it is, if it is not pumping electricity into you, electrifying you, and raising you out of the deadness of your humanity, it is not of God. And everybody will come to the knowledge of the truth. That's, that's it. Because the, the man has to go back to his origin. So Elisha is someone who tasted of the double portion of the anointing. Meaning he was more anointed than Elijah, his master. Elijah, his master, was what? Taken away. In fact, he appeared in the transfiguration. He appeared in the transfiguration of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. He appeared in the transfiguration of Jesus and, you know, when these things, when you see things like this, they have a meaning. Elijah and Moses appeared with Jesus in a symbolic gesture. When Moses left them. They went to look for the body of Moses. It was never found. When Elijah, Elijah left them, they looked for the body of Elijah. It was not found. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's a message there. Men looked for where God buried these two servants of God. That is the work of men. Because men are agents of death. <coughs> Men are actually married to death. 
men live in a system of debt. They believe in debt. Debt is their God. Praise God. It's the truth. It's a system of debt. People worship debt. But you know what? Jesus made it clear that God is a God of the living. What has God got to do with the dead? Anything that is death, remember, is God of God. God has got no hand in that. God quickens you and maintains you in life. God does not kill, neither does he have anything to do with that. God does not bury people. God raises people from the dead. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have to understand today what went wrong with Elijah. If Elijah was translated that he did not die, then why? Why? Will somebody who was more anointed taste of death? These things are recorded in the Bible for our lesson. Amen. Remember along the way, everything is working against you to subject you to death. Everything is working against you to disrupt you, to disarm you. When you meet an enemy, what do you do? You disarm the enemy. That's true. I have studied everything that has happened over the years. I discovered that whenever you meet brethren or you meet people, all they are trying to do is to take away that knowledge from you, to disrobe you. Praise God. And at the end of the day, they stand back and mock, and mock you. Praise God. Amen. That is what we see in this world. That's why it's written in the Bible that you shall not look at the nakedness of your brother or your sister. You shall not look onto their nakedness. It is the way of this world to look at the nakedness of others. To see you without the glorious covering of God. Praise God. Amen. Now, you remember the story of Ham? You know, the children of Noah. I told you about the cause of Ham. Ham was there looking at the father naked and laughing. While the other two children went backwards with a cloth to do what? To cover their father. Those ones were blessed. The one that was looking at the father's nakedness was the one that they laughed at. Why? All these are there in the Bible to teach us something. Amen. You dare not look on the creation without seeing the glory of God. Otherwise, you walk in the course. Amen. Praise God. I so know. everything you go against in this world is to remove the knowledge, to, to disrobe you, to disarm you, to take away that knowledge from you. But you have to keep it. If you've got the revelation of Christ, you have to keep it. You have to guard it. On the way, you have to go in a way that you talk to no man. Jesus Christ said, when you are on the way, salute no man. Praise God. Hallelujah. What he's trying to say, don't let them corrupt what you've heard. Don't let them take it away. Everything is against you. Everything in this world is against you. That's why it's called the world. The world does not know God. So Antichrist is the system. And the system is there to take away this knowledge from you. And at the end of the day, at times you, you even lose faith. At times you forget who you are because of the pressure, praise God, because of the effect of what men have done to you. At times you even forget who you are, praise God. Amen. So you have to be attentive. Like Elijah, you will climb up the mountain, you will give a word that God says the Lord, and you will do what? Close your ears and hide your head underneath your your, 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 your knees, you know what he did on the mountain? He did this and, you know why? So that he will not hear or see anything that any other person will tell him. Only that word that he gave, that he received from God, he concentrated on it. Hallelujah. Amen. So the, the challenge is keeping what we've heard. I'm telling you from personal experience. And I realized that one of the most dangerous people
things that you ever encounter is fellowship with people. Don't fellowship with everybody. Even if it means you stay your own, alone, be alone. Praise God. We are talking about things that pertain to life. Don't carry the burden of religion. Praise God. That energy, use it to keep what you have. Praise God. If we gather, we gather together and we all put our, inject our energy together in oneness. But never you carry the, on your shoulders the body of a religion. Never! God did not send you to do that. He says, my body is what? Light. All you need to do is to keep the knowledge of the Christ in you. That is what we catapult you into eternity. That is your inheritance forever. Amen. That is what will establish you in eternity. That is what will give you eternal life. Because when you have the word, you confess Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. As it is written, salvation comes by what your confession. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you are ashamed of the gospel, you cannot attain to that place. Praise God. What does it say? It says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. For the power of God, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone that believeth. Praise God. Amen. 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 Now, if you go down, it says in another part, now these are scriptures you all know. Praise God. Hallelujah. It talks about our confession. It says salvation comes by confession. Praise God. Hallelujah. Chapter 10, let's start from chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 7. Okay. I expected that you Bible, Bible scholars all know these scriptures. Okay. Romans 10, verse 7. Yes. I just continue from there. Who shall this um, verse who shall this or who shall descend to the deep that is to bring Christ again from the dead? But what said it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, praise God. Hallelujah. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And shall believe in thy heart that what the Lord raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believed unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the scripture said, Whosoever believed on him shall not be be put to shame. Praise God. Now, you can see the salvation that we are talking about comes by your word confession. The moment you stop confessing Christ, you go back to the realm of the dead. Now, the confession of Christ is not you stand out there in the middle of the street with the Bible and say, Jesus is Lord. Be saved. Jesus is Lord. Well, you can do that all your life and, and it will not profit you if you don't know what you are doing. What he's saying is your confession of the Christ in you, your confession of the faith. The idea right now is that by faith you have believed, you've known who you are and now you walk according to that, that knowledge. That is confession. Amen. You now walk in a new name by faith. You don't walk in a new name when you get your first job in the office or when you get your first million dollars. No. You walk by faith when you have heard the word and what? Believe, praise God. Hallelujah. That is your confession. With the heart I have believed and with my mouth I confess. The moment you stop confessing, you've lost out and everything about the devil. Everything about the systems of religion, the brethren you will meet who call themselves Christians, they want you to stop it. But mark you, test them, 
test them. Any spirit that does not confess that Christ is come in. That is not that is not a Christ. That is not what that's not the will of God. The will of God is not that you go to church on Sundays and call yourself a Christian. That one cannot make take you to heaven. Praise God. Hallelujah. Those things are just of men. That they are unknown of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's the identity the Christ, Him that has been before time, invisible, incorruptible, the one that created the heavens and earth, the one who is actually God. If I can recognize this identity, know it for myself, then I am saved. That is the salvation. I believe now I baptized into the death, into that new life. That is when salvation comes. Hallelujah. Amen. So along the way, everything we want you to stop talking. You know that? And when you stop talking, they are all happy. And when you forget, you die off. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And when you die off, you know what men will do? They will carry your body and bury it and, and, so, and they will write on the it was a great man of God <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> praise God hallelujah. beware of men the devil does not come with a fork and a knife and a tail like we think he comes wearing a suit and a big bible and he's the best preacher in town I tell you that's the devil Hallelujah. He preaches so well. He quotes the scripture so well. Watch it well. He might just be the devil. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, even Jesus will not argue with the, the, with the people who challenge him with the Bible. He always used the way out of, to get out of the argument. Because if you try to argue with the Bible, you will not go anywhere. It's either it is given to you, or it's not. Praise God. Hallelujah. So there's no point trying to worry why people don't hear you. Leave it alone. Amen. You know, I forget these things too. It's the Lord that wakes me up at times at night and say, Did I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Last night I woke up and I walked around the house around that three in the morning. And I went around. I looked around and I, I just started to imagine how years have passed, how things have happened. And I remembered in that room upstairs in the parlor. A small girl was just there and looked at this small girl just said, I heard a voice telling me to tell you. She was just talking like, the Lord said you should anoint Trevor, anoint your house. Anoint your house. And when that word came, the father of the girl told us to get a bottle of oil and, you know, put oil around the house. Of course, we obeyed because they are elderly man. But I told my wife that what the Lord was saying is that what? And man, consecrate yourself unto the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 And I remember all those things. And I remember how that many things have happened over the years. And I've come to know one thing now. Don't mix this word you are hearing with religion. It will never. I've tried. We had fellowship before, and when I, I thought back, I remember all of them that came for the fellowship. Where are they today? They've still gone back. To, oh, they, 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 they've still gone back to their ways. All of them have gone. All. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I just, I just watch. I wondered on how time passes. Praise God. Hallelujah. How time passes and how. People live in unconsciousness. You know what I mean of unconsciousness? Mm -hmm. You are just, you think you are living, but you are, living. you are dead. dead. Praise God. Yeah. And the Lord told me, share with them today on why Elisha died. I'm going to be very brief, praise God. Because when it gets too long, you know, people, they go like this. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. When you make it short in this new age, people like small short blogs and short messages. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we know how Elijah was chosen to take over the prophet Elijah. Praise God. And when Elijah met with Elisha, he was working in a farm with oxen. 
12 oxen, which is symbolic of, you know, ministry and all that. We don't want to go into that now. He told Elisha, follow me. And he agreed, to, Elisha immediately agreed to follow him, but he told him something. Please, let me go back and greet my family and tell them bye-bye. Elijah said, well, do, what, do, do whatever you want, what pleases you. And Elijah waited for him. He went, he did a party for the family, called them together and told them bye-bye. There and then, he missed it. Because like Jesus Christ says, anybody that puts his, plug, his hand on the plug and looks back, is not worthy of the kingdom. Already there. He has already missed it. You see, when you get a calling from God, remember one thing, I want to warn you people today. One of the biggest obstacles is what you call your family or your friend or your... You don't have a family on the earth. I'm telling you, I'm giving you the eternal mind of God now. Listen to me. Take it. Some of these things are not interesting. They are bitter truths. The best you can do for your children is to give them the word. That's what they will remember you for. They will remember you for the breast you gave them to suck. They will not remember you for the money you gave them. For the schooling. They will remember you for the word. The incorruptible word. That you give them. You can be actually the savior of your child. You can appear to your child as Jesus. Otherwise, it's all a waste of time. What are you appearing as? As a mortal. That memory will be what? It will be erased at the end of the day. Praise God. I've seen it, brother. They have seen it, and I tell you, it doesn't mean that you abandon them or you don't treat them well. Praise God. We handle this world with wisdom. Yes, sir. Praise God. But what I'm trying to tell you on a higher level, praise God. Give them the word. Praise God. He went back to fellowship. And you know, when you, you sit down with people in meet on a table with people, with unbelievers, they what? They corrupt you. Yes. So that's one thing. On, on the way, we know how he went to Jericho, he went to, Beth, to, to Bethel. We know how the prophets of 50s. Now the prophet of 50s, 50 is the number of Pentecost. These are symbolic numbers. The prophet of 50s are those Pentecostal Christians. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, you know, Fire. Holy Ghost kind of thing, Christians, you know. And um, they just, they stay in a realm where they, they receive Holy Ghost and they, they, they don't go beyond a certain realm. They, they put a boundary for themselves. These are the people that still see God outside. They've not gone beyond that belief. They walk in righteousness, they, they are good, they don't do bad things, they don't drink, they don't smoke, you know, they pay their tithes, they do everything. But they are the prophets of what? The fifties. They still have gifts. They, they, there's the big gifts and all these things. And along the way, these people told Elisha, do you know God is about to take your master away? And Elisha did well to shut their mouth, told them, I know, keep quiet. And he moved on. Praise God. He was wise in that sense. But let us see what happened. When they crossed over the Jordan and Elijah was about to be translated, very, very symbolic scene, because that translation is a translation which all of us must experience to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Praise God. Suddenly, Elijah asked Elisha, What do you want? Anything you want, I will give it to you before I'm taking away. And he did well to ask for what the double portion okay, of the anointing. Praise God. Which was a wise thing. We've shared this thing before. That that question is always thrown at everybody today. Every moment you wake up, there's a question being asked you today. What do you want? What do you want? And I can hear somebody say, well, brother, I need some big money in my account. I need a job. I need a fine husband. Praise God. The good, the legal things to ask for. Isn't it? Yes, sir. Praise God. You need a car, don't you? Praise God. When I drive on the highway, you know, and I, you know what I mean now? You, you fly past cars, you know, 
there, there, there is a feeling. You, 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 we need these things. Let's not be trying try to be too, to be spiritually arrogant. We, we need them. But what is your priority in life? Elisha says, "What I want the double portion of the anointing, because he knew that if he had the anointing, he can have the other things. Amen. If you have the power, you can have every other thing." Elisha's master multiplied loaves of bread. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He did all the miracles of Jesus. So if I have that anointing in me, definitely everything I have, every other thing. Praise God. Hallelujah. So he was wise and eventually the hour came because the only condition was that if you see me being taken away, if you see this secret, this thing, because only two of them were there, nobody. I've always told you, whenever God, whenever things are happening, there's no, there are never no men around. Men, don't, that, that's why don't be worried. It's a, it's a place of one loneliness. Why is it that any time God appears, there are nobody around? Only one person, only the person that sees him. Why? Praise God. Hallelujah. Anyway, the other people don't want to see him anyway. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 What did those prophets have asked Elijah, Elijah, Sir, Sir, can we follow you? Who knows? They would have said, Okay, come. They would have, but they are not interested. The disciples who went up the mountain, only three of them, if the others had asked, Jesus, Master, we want to come too. Will you stop them? But they are not interested. People are not interested in anointing, spiritual talk. But spirituality is not about no, 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 no. It's not, it's not about dressing, you know, in a haggard manner. Some people look at me and they look at my shoe and my dressing, and they say, this man cannot be a man of God. <laughs> they look at my car and say, no, 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 no. It cannot be. This one, a, a gun man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> you know, in the garden of God, there are different types of trees. Different types. Praise God. But all of them have good fruits. Praise God. We cannot all be the same. Praise God. Some shine past others. Some do shine, shine past others. Praise God. But all of them are what? They are good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So the, I cannot change that aspect of me. And don't let me to be like you. Praise God. If you want to live that kind of life, well, okay. That's your own choice. I reject it in Jesus. Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> A moment of him on there. Okay, so the moment comes. It says, if you can see me being taken away, only if you can see me being taken away, your request shall be granted unto you. What are we seeing, brethren? If you can see the mystery of the all eyes shall see him. Seeing is comprehending. Seeing the Godhead. Because what appeared was actually the Godhead. Was the body of Christ. Which was, that was what appeared. Because suddenly he sees a chariot. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. And he sees horsemen. Fiery horsemen. Who had a fire. Shepherds, horses, and a chariot. God. Make not, don't talk with the word of God. Hallelujah. That is the same thing that will happen upon the mountain of transfiguration. That those horses are actually you and I. Those are they are the angels and ministers of God. And when they when they appear, they, they, we are the ones that carry God on our back. Without us, there's no God. Remember that. Because that, you see a chariot with the husband. We are the ones that actually transport God. Praise God. Right. Our presence brings God into, 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 yes. He was seeing the body of Christ and in many members. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In another form, my wife has seen them as, as Indian men. She saw 
you know, crowned with, of, you know, the, the Indian men, the feathers. She saw many of them, like many crowns. Praise God. It shows you the multiplicity of God. That God is one, yet many. Hallelujah. Amen. God is one, but yet many. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. This, this is the mystery that God wants us to, to know. Not that you are outside there and <laughs> looking at God outside. No, no. He wants you to see that mystery. Because if you can see it, you'll be married to that mystery. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Elisha saw this mystery and he shouted, Father, Father, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. The chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Father, Father, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, he was seeing the source of life there. Eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. And when he see it, what he did was what? He tore his old robe. Hallelujah. Amen. He tore it off, which is mean a destruction of the old identity, the old man. And he put on the robe of Elijah, because that one had fallen. Hallelujah. That Elijah was translated. He was taken up into the realm of the Father. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. I came out from the Father and returned to the Father. Amen. He had finished the race. Hallelujah. Amen. And now it was now time for Elisha, like it's our turn now, to run the race. Praise God. Hallelujah. If we have seen this mystery, you don't need to tear your dress outside anyway, anyway. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To walk in newness of Life. Yeah, praise God. The old corrupt man has been destroyed by the light of the revelation of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And what happens? He turned back and went to the other side. Something happened. And you see, we have to be careful because he will discover at the end of the day most of our problems are with men. Praise God. Hallelujah. Be careful with men. Beware of men. men. Men, I'm talking of in their low state. You know who they are from eternity. But for a moment, they might be entangled with something else. Praise God. Hallelujah. So beware of men. Now, let us go to the book of Kings. Second Kings. Second King chapter 2 verse 15. Now this is Elisha. He, he, Elisha had received the double portion of the anointing. He had come across over Jordan. Now you, you know the meaning of Jordan. Jordan means death. In reality, Elisha was baptized. Praise God. He was baptized into the glory of the master. Second King chapter Chapter 2, are we there? Yes. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah does rest on Elijah. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. And they said unto him, Behold now, there be with thy servants fifty strong men, these are the Pentecostal religious people. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master. Lest peradventure the Spirit of the Lord has taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, You shall not sink. And when they argued with him till he was ashamed, he, he said, send. They sent there for 50 men, and they sought three days, but found him not. And when they came again unto him, for he tarried at Jer Jericho, he said unto them, Did I not say unto you, Go not? Now let's pause there. This was a very grave error of Elijah. Now, the prophets, these religious people, Elisha saw 
His master being what? Translated. But did he doubt? There was something wrong, something wrong somewhere. Because he waited. First of all, he told them not to go, that they won't find him. What they said was that maybe God had dropped the body, deposited the body of Elijah somewhere in the mountains. You know, God, you know. But Elijah saw that his master was taken up and he did not stand his ground. They persuaded him until he was what? Ashamed. They disarmed him of his knowledge, even to the extent that he now waited for them. Can you imagine? He waited for them three days when they went to do the search. That means he now began to doubt. Maybe he was drowsy, maybe he was sleepy. For a moment there, his faith wavered. Because there's no reason for him to have waited there if he didn't expect a result. All these things are written there purposely in the Bible for a, move, for a, for a reason. He said he waited for them three days. Why did he wait? Why did he tell him to go? First of all, never sit down with religious people. Anything that will turn around or cause you to waver, to doubt your faith. Praise God. Hallelujah. Where there is doubt, that is where the waves, you will drown down that sea. Be careful. Be careful what you hear. Be careful the people you... At times, they make you begin to even doubt whether what you heard is true. After all the revelation you've seen, you go and sit down with certain people, don't let them influence you. He was at what? Ashamed. He did not stand his ground as what? A man of God. And told them straight away, do not go. He was supposed to give them the gospel that the master was what? Taking away. The Lord had translated him. Hallelujah. Amen. If you heard this message, praise God, of eternal life, that those that believe shall never die, never be ashamed to share it with people. Amen. And let me tell you, as you share it, they will, they will laugh at you. Ooh! They, will, they will mock you. It's written there. He said they shall mock at what? The son of man. They will laugh at you. Hallelujah. Amen. At times it hurts, isn't it? Amen. You know, when we were at the hotel some, some years ago, somebody comes back and tells me how the argument from the, from the airport up to Sant'Angelo. That's almost an hour. They say they were they virtually almost exchanged blows <laughs> over, that, over the word of immortality that we preach. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I heard outside they say, somebody said, well, he preached that we will not die. Praise God. Isn't it a mocking? Praise God. Hallelujah. And they watch out now for any small mistake. <laughs> any human error. <laughs> He's not going to die. Praise God. They want to disarm you of what the Lord has shown you, what the revelation God has given you. But what? Stand your ground. Jesus Christ says, anybody that is ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of him before my father. The moment you are you don't you stop speaking and confessing what the Lord has showed you, the power begins to leave you gradually. Begin to leave you before you know it, you are a dead man. Who are the dead men? The dead men who are people who have lost knowledge of who they are. You forget what you heard. That's the system here. The system of this world makes you forget who you are. It's the system of what? The dead. So the energy you have is to keep what you've heard. Don't, Jesus Christ said it. Say, when you are on the way, Salute no man, no man. Doesn't mean that when you leave here today, anybody that, that greets you, hey, hello, he just turns your back on the person. Brother said, don't salute me. <laughs> Hallelujah. What it means is that 
don't be yoked with what unbelievers. unbelievers. Who is the unbeliever? The person that does not believe the mystery of Christ. It's not the person that goes to church that is a believer. Every Sunday he goes to church, every he's a pastor, he's this, he went to Bible school. Leave all that crap. He's a pastor for himself. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. All that is what? Baloney. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody that denies me before men, they will be denied before the Father. You are denied entrance as you begin to walk in that realm, hiding the light, the truth. What happens is that gradually you shrink away from God's presence and you what? You die off. You must confess. You must live with this truth. You must walk by this truth. Hallelujah. Amen. I've experienced it the moment I stop talking, the moment I stop preaching, the moment I stop declaring what I've seen, I begin to forget. And that's what they want. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And they rejoice with joy. When they see you, you're, you're quiet. Hallelujah. Let me just round up fast. You know, this one is quite tough today. It's a day of long, long whatever. Please we turn to the book of... Uh, hold on there. I hope you guys are following me today. Okay, turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 26. We're going to round up with the scriptures here. Probably we'll do another a part two of on this lesson on, on Elisha because these things are to keep us in the faith. Okay? Matthew chapter 10, verse 26. Amen. This is Jesus speaking. It says, Fear them. Not therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be made known. Whatever I tell you in darkness, speak ye in the light, and what you hear in the ear, that preach upon your house stop. And fear not them which kill the body, but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him that is able to destroy both body and soul, soul and body in what in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one and none of them sh uh, shall fall onto the ground without, without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbers. The hairs of a what head are all what all numbers. numbers. Now let me just I don't want to, this is not the, I don't want to, let me just give you a nugget. What does it mean the hairs of your head are numbered? Think about that. Okay? Now, go down to verse 2. This is the crux of the matter. Verse 32. And, and verse 33. Whosoever shall confess me before what? Before men. Before men, him will I confess before my Father in heaven. And whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus Christ speaks about Whatever you've heard in the dark, speak in the light. light. There is nothing hidden that shall not be brought to light. light. What Elisha saw on the other side of the river are the secret things of God. Praise God. Because that thing is always there. His eye was open to see a secret that men don't know about. But that thing, the will of God, is that you what? Reveal it. Reveal what the Lord has shown to you. Don't keep quiet. Hallelujah. Amen. You must prophesy before men and nations. You must occupy yourself with this mystery. Because if you don't do that, you die off. See, you die off in hell. Now, hell, shwell, in this sense, when you read hell there, it's not talking about one place to go to when you die, you know. When they don't find your name in a book, they put you in a hole and all that kind of stuff. Hell is already a realm of mortality where men are already dying. Where the worms don't, don't die. The fire is not quenched. It is the realm where the corruptible is being destroyed. The worms can only eat that which is corruptible. Shaking. Yes. 
But if you walk in the identity of the Father, you walk in an identity that is incorruptible. Yes. The canker worms and the caterpillar will only feed on you when you walk as a mortal. You're already dying away. And it can only get worse. You're perishing away. In your trespass, your trespass is that you've you've gone away, you've oh. deviated from your identity in God. That's your, that's your trespass, and you die away. That's why you have to pay your tithes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know how you're going to pay your tithes? Lay your body on the altar, give your life back unto God. Hallelujah! Amen. And He's going to do what? He's going to rebuke the caterpillar and the canker one Amen. forever. Hallelujah! Amen. But Elisha submitted to the caterpillar and the canker worm. Elisha, praise God. At the end of the day, he died of a sickness. He was sick. Forgive me, I don't normally do this, but I have to. Praise God. Go to Second Kings, chapter. Sorry, chapter thirteen, verse fourteen. Let me round up with this. I, this second time I'm rounding up. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. It will be sweet if we don't do it well. Are you fast? Second Kings chapter 13 verse 14. Amen. Now, Elisha was falling sick of his sickness whereof he died. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him and wept over his face and said, Oh, my father, my father, the child out of Israel and the horsemen thereof. thereof. Oh God. <laughs> you see the show of shame? Praise God. Hallelujah. Show of shame. They mock him with the word that he had. Hallelujah. You know, that's one thing that Elijah told me the other day. Years ago, you will not remember. Even before he even came into this message, he told me, you know what it means for a man to die. You, you know, we are actually the Almighty revealed as mortals. We've, we've, we've descended. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. God is, you see, if you can discover yourself who you are, you cannot experience. What happened to Elisha is that Elisha forgot his, his identity. God. Along the way, he lost a track of who he was. We have to keep ourselves along the way. He was buried. If you go down to verse, verse, um, verse 20, and Elisha died and they buried him. Hallelujah. And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming, in the coming year, in the, uh, sorry, at the coming in, in of the year. And it came to pass as they were burying a man that behold, they spied a band of men and they cast the man into the, the sepulchre of um, Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. Praise God. You see that the, the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. When God has anointed you, he does not come and say, give me, give, me, give me back my, you know. I just want you to understand something here. That the act of bearing Elisha was because he did not believe what he had seen. Walk on it. Yes. Because if he had insisted and told them, look here, don't, don't go. He doubted. If he did not die, he would not have waited three days. He was waiting for the results. Do we believe what God has showed us? Immortality and life? To so those that believe, they shall never, never die. That is the word of the Lord, and the Lord, word of the Lord is what is yea and amen. amen. They shall never die. God is not glorified in your death. God is glorified in your resurrection. That is when the name of the Lord is glorified. 
when you resurrect into life. Praise God. Hallelujah. So brethren, don't be ashamed of this gospel. Hallelujah. Well, what we have here is the key to eternal life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't be discouraged. I was almost discouraged at a stage. Praise God. Then the Lord came. Trevor, didn't I warn you? I even sent prophets to you to prophesy, to tell me, don't be distracted. And all those are just distractions of devils. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So that you stop talking. But if you continue talking, you will maintain your, yourself in life and you shall also give life to many Amen. others. Come oh, yeah. God bless you. Yeah.